Hey everyone, this is Rocky from WeLearnChess.com and uh, I started a game, I wasn't going to record it, but then uh, we got a fried liver and I'm always trying to put these games on my channel so I figured uh, I would start the recording here a second late and we'll see what line we get. He probably thought I didn't know what to do because I was paused there. Okay, so he actually, he plays the best retreat, so um, what did I say I was supposed to do here? Hmm. I think you pretty much always kick this knight, although maybe, did I say bishop b7? Yeah, I think this was what we looked at at the end of that uh, recent video. Hmm. I don't want to trade pieces, and I don't want to... Uh, if he takes, takes... Where's his knight going? I'm tempted to play f5, but he's got that check. I'm tempted to play knight f4 just to uh, keep him bottled up a little bit. Knight f4, will he actually play g3? I drop back. Still though. Well, I could take this bishop actually. Oh, actually, yeah, that would be be great. Okay, so um, if I play here, can you play this check? I have uh, g6 there. This is going to be really wacky. <laughs> I could have actually played this check uh, right away. I wonder if I should do it now. Check, king f3, and back. Okay, is there anything I can do where I don't move backwards? Pushing the pawn, takes, takes. Just trying to open up the king. If I push the pawn and he moves the knight. Knight back here. Queen out. Okay, now I'm just going to move back. Kenny has this check. Alright. I'm going to uh, get rid of this light square bishop because I think it's potentially a big problem. And um, so, what do I want to do here? I've got <laughs> a really airy position around my king, and I've got a lot of loose pieces. Um, I guess I have to play here. Actually, he can take this pawn. Shoot. Okay, probably gonna have to let that take him take that pawn with check. Get my king over here to the king side or the queen side. I'm sorry. Probably even taking with the knight is uh, is good. Although maybe queen here. I should try to keep the bishop pair. <sighs> he has checks here. Hmm. This is bad. This is bad. I have to take with the king here. Ah, I guess this would check. Yeah, that was... Uh... Okay, so we got the computer analysis back uh, from chess.com, but while that was running, I also um, ran through a couple lines in Stockfish. So I'm here in the analysis board because I can draw hours here. I'm going to see what I can remember from that. Uh, it's a lot of wild positions here, obviously. So this is a position after um, White's dropped the bishop back to d3. I remember when I had Stockfish 6 that it was evaluating this as pretty decent for white with like a half pawn advantage. Um, Stockfish 7 is a little more moderate, giving advantage closer to 0.2 or 0.3. Um, so 
it looks like maybe it's found some of the resources for black. I'm not quite sure um, what new things it's seen that it didn't see before. But okay, so um, I let this position run for about five minutes actually in Stockfish, and um, it couldn't really decide between three moves. It kept changing the evaluation over and over. Uh, maybe if I let it run for like 20 minutes, then uh, maybe it'll come up with a definitive answer. Um, a couple of the moves uh, involve moving this knight and uncovering the attack on this loose white knight. Uh, and it's loose because the d3 bishop is blocking the d-pawn, so it's disturbing the communication between this bishop and the knight, which usually can be had by playing d3 or d4. So um, that's one of the disadvantages or drawbacks of this bishop d3 move. So uh, the knight could go here, for example, and covering uh, this. And um, this is one thing I think that, that I learned when looking at this analysis that I really should remember. Um, and that's that in these d3 lines, it's one of the lines where h6 actually doesn't make sense. And the reason is that if you play h6, we saw this in the game, um, the knight just drops back to a square where it's protected, where in all the other lines where the bishop goes to different squares, the knight's not protected on e4, so it can't go there. So it's got to go back to either f3 or h3. And on f3, it usually gets kicked again. Um, however, here, this is actually not so great for black because white just won a tempo. Uh, because this knight is under attack, and although it's defended, black doesn't want to start simplifying because obviously it'll just be lost in the end game. So then I think what I played in the game here um, is knight c5, which is an okay move, but you could get this position with black winning a tempo. So if you just move here immediately, now you're the one winning a tempo, and if white were to go back here, then okay, you could play maybe bishop e7 and then castle and maybe go for f5 and try to get uh, some activity with the f and the e pawns. Um, but that it's different when you're getting the tempo, and that's a big deal in this, uh, these sharp lines here, especially because you're trying to play for the initiative as black. Okay, so um, that's one move. The other move that the computer was looking at is bishop d6, just getting rid of the castle, I guess, and putting this bishop on a nice diagonal that could p potentially open up, like if you can set up a queen-bishop battery and then uh, maybe push this pawn at some opportune time. Uh, white probably won't let you do that, it'll probably blockade it, but still. Uh, could end up being something where you set up the queen bishop battery on this, uh, and even if the pawn is blockaded, you could maybe take with the knight, bishop takes, and then f5, which, you know, after you've castled, the rook would have that, uh, and then the bishop would have to move, and then maybe you push again, and you're uncovering a checkmate attack while maybe attacking something else. So there's definitely some ideas here um, uh, with that. So, um, yeah, bishop d6 is an interesting idea. And the last move, and I think I kind of like this, uh, well, I don't know, I like bishop d6 too, but uh, knight g4 is interesting. So again, un uncovering this attack, but also putting this knight in white's territory, and it's not easy for him to get rid of it. If he wants to play h3, for example, um, that's actually not going to work just because of knight takes f2, and then after king takes, uh, note that you shouldn't play queen f6 check because it can block this way, and there's no fork here. Um, but you can play... Um, Bishop c5 check, just getting a piece out. Probably the king should get off the f file, so king e1, you can snap up this knight. And uh, now you've basically got an attack for, I won't say for free, I mean that the material count's actually even, and your king's going to be pretty safe. Uh, it's also going to take white a little while to get his king safe, and so this looks, it looks pretty bad for white. Um, so yeah, I would say probably you are attacking for free, plus you've got your pieces developed. We can't totally count this knight yet, but should be able to get in later. Uh, in the meantime, we've got some some nice possibilities for attack. So, um, yeah, you can't boot the knight with h3. If he tries with f3, I mean, you can probably just take this knight and takes here, and um, you could maybe take this with the bishop. I guess he would probably block with the bishop. You could uh, probably play bishop c5 just to stop the king from castling if something like Queen f3, you can play this check. If he tries to do this, you can just take. And I think after the simplifications here, the materials even. Black does have this um, compromised queenside structure, but he's got a pawn majority here on the king side, plus he's going to be able to get his, his remaining pieces active a little bit quicker than white because he's white's still bottled up with this annoying um, sort of uh, way that he's blocked in his center pawn, and it's going to be a little bit awkward for him to develop. Probably take him a couple extra moves than it should. So I think, yeah, that's probably why Stockfish is giving this as like a pawn advantage for black. Um, okay, so 
So I think that's fine. So I, and I think that either one of those moves you're likely to see in Blitz, especially H3, I think. Um, but yeah, probably a lot of people will, will move the knight back. I mean, if he moves back here, okay, he's not getting forked yet, but even after something like bishop c5, pressuring this pawn, and after, say, something like maybe castles, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if black should castle right away here, uh, and then maybe, um, maybe try to play f5, f4. There might be some ideas with queen d4 at some point if this knight moves. Mm, yeah, there's. Uh, I'd probably have to think about this more, but there's some interesting ideas here, I think. Uh, still some attacking ideas. So, yeah, probably probably if I were white, I would, I would want to avoid an f3 just because at some point f5 followed by e4 can be really uncomfortable. So probably blockading this pawn is a little bit safer. Also, it keeps this bishop out of c5, so this is a multi-purpose move. Um, here probably you can play f5 because there's no queen check right here uh, and because this comes with a tempo. I think the computer recommended dropping the bishop back to e2 here so that if I were to take here he can take here. So uh, probably h5 and yeah this is this is a total mess. Um, yeah I think this is where I laid off on one of my previous videos and I still haven't gotten further than this so I'm gonna have to do it again. But um, yeah this is the position I really have to I have to look at and see if there's something here for her for black that makes this worth playing. So uh, for now, I'll leave it at that, but uh, let's pop over here to the, the computer analysis to see what happened in the game. And uh, we get to this key position. Oops, here it is, okay. Yeah, and this is, we see here that I lost the tempo. Uh, however, this kind of natural response here, I think was uh, helpful to me because playing net f4 was nice. Actually, I could have taken this pawn immediately here, and I don't know why I did, because that would have been really nice. Um, actually, I don't know if we can set that up in the, uh, let me refresh this. Yeah, um, before I play f5, just taking this pawn is really nice because you've got this knight retreat, and now you're threatening to bring the bishop out, uh, and then after that check, um, yeah, I mean, this, probably the king wouldn't be able to go to the g-file because you've got the queen coming out too, so probably would have to go back here, so... Let's just say, like, just something, some non-move here for what? Yeah, going here looks uh, looks uh, probably suicidal after something like f5, like here. I don't even know. Five. I guess you could try to move this here, but then, uh, well, maybe okay. But he's got the deep pawn push here. Um, but if anything, here you can you can grab this rook in the corner, and there's probably something better here. Uh, probably some way to even like force a mate actually, but I'm too tired. It's like 3 a.m. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and the other nice part about this here, so if you were to play, for example, like rook here to uh, avoid this problem, but check here and maybe here, you can actually put this check. And the king will either have to step into, step into discoveries or he's got to give the exchange and then. I think the computer even wanted to try to just simplify a little bit here, but that's probably favoring black. So, um, yeah, this is uh, this is interesting, and it shows you that a lot of times, even though you do get this messed up queenside structure, you can fight back and either mess up uh, white's uh, pawn structure, maybe win a couple pawns, or win an exchange or some kind of material, or play for mate. There's a lot of possibilities in these lines, uh, and I mean. Probably like the best way I can do if he plays perfectly is that um, that one line I showed before, but uh, even that is a fighting line for both sides. So I really don't think it's uh, you know you have to avoid this opening. So um, yeah, let's go back here. So yeah, I should have taken on f2 immediately, but this is a little bit slower and I don't have the same play. Plus I didn't drop back to the better square. And uh, yeah, simplifying here was just. Uh, kind of silly. I, I don't even know if it's worth looking at the rest of this because this was just a couple blunders in a row to end the game. Um, yeah, you definitely have to be careful with, careful with the f-pawn pushes when your king is still in, in the middle, but uh, yeah, especially when you allow the, the queen h5 check, uh, which is probably almost never a good idea. But um, yeah, it was an interesting game, and this uh, bishop d3 line still is something that I have to look more into, but I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you around.